Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul's Cathedral in Camels, BC. Today's service originates from St. Paul's, from the traditional territory of the Tecumlips, the Shwepnik, Kamloops, and area First Nation. We acknowledge their care for and the working of, their land, of the land prior to contact with Europeans. As Canadian Anglicans, we continue to work together toward healing and reconciliation and a new experience of sharing the land together. You will find today's bulletin, if you're watching online, today's bulletin will be in, uh, will be in the comment section of, uh, of, of the Facebook feed and uh, or uh, the, the St. Paul's Church website. <clears throat> uh, I don't have any announcements other than to say it's hot today. <laughs> but I don't need to announce that, you know that already. And so as we prepare, let's take a moment to prepare ourselves for worship. And our opening hymn is number 309 in common praise. Praise the Lord with the sound of trumpets. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets ever hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. And glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. 
O God, the protector of all, who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as your, our ruler and guide, we may so pass through the things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading this morning is a reading from the first book of Amos. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take for yourself a wife of whoredom and have children of whoredom, for the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and he took Gomer, daughter of Dibliam, Dibliam, pardon me, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel, for in a little while I will punish the house of Jehu with the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her Loruhamah, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them. But I will have pity on the house of Judah, and I will save them by the, by the Lord their God. I will not save them by the bow or by sword or by war or by horses or by horsemen. Then the Lord said, name him, um, pardon me, when she had weaned, Loru Hama, she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, Name him Loamai, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the number of the people of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which can be neither measured nor numbered. And in the place where it is said to them, You are not my people, it shall be said to them, children of the living God. Hear what the Spirit says to all people. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 85 or 87? 89 verses 17 or verses 20 to 37. And we'll say that res responsibly by the half verse. God, you have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortunes of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from, wrath, from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O God, our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will, uh, will you not give us life again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his people faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him and that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. For the Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. 
Righteousness shall go forth, shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to the fullness in him who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross, He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or observing festivals, new moons or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without a cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. Hear what the Spirit says to all people. Our gradual hymn is is, uh, I'm not sure what the name of it is, it's not in here. Seek ye first.
with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was praying in a certain place. After he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answered with it, from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed, and I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at, that, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. For everyone who asks, receive, and everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. And is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give an, a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, if then, you who are evil no more know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father give thy Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ask and it shall be given unto you. and I speak to you in the name of the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is what happens when you get old. <laughs> you, forget, you forget. My brain is full of useless information. I told that to my neurologist the other day and he laughed. I love the, I love the prophets. The prophets... You know, the prophets in the Hebrew scriptures, I just love them. I love them because they're passionate. Their passion for God, their love of God is so that they don't hold back anything. They don't hold back. They never think about consequences or anything. They just give you all of themselves. And you know, I love that about them. This passion they give that they, they're going to speak the, God's truth in the world no matter what. And they don't worry about it. They don't worry about it. They give it all. It's all there in front of them. And they don't, and they never seem to, they never seem to worry about those consequences that happen. And believe me, I'm sure a few of them got a few knocks on the head along the way. And so, it, and so when the disciples asked Jesus about prayer, I'm all, it reminded me that these disciples were all Jewish. They would have been grown up, and this would have been part of their tradition. 
They may not, they would have been there teaching as young children. This taught that the Psalms. They could have been taught. They would have been taught those that it would have been part of their lexicon in life. And so they come to Jesus, and I. And one of the things that I love about them, they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray like John taught his disciples. And one of the things about John is I, I love about John is John is one of those prophets that is the, like the prophets of old. He was like that. He never held anything back. His passion for God was so much so it cost him his head. And so this was, this is what they wanted him, them to pray. And I was wondering why that was. My curiosity, this prayer that we say every week that has been part of our lexicon for so long, we do it, we say it all the time. We used to say it in school every morning. It's a prayer of trust. And what fascinates me about it is I had to, I looked back to chapter 10 in Luke to see what was going on at that time. And the disciples had been sent out to take out into the world the, the, the gospel, the gospel message. They were told to take nothing with them. They went out into the communities around and just like, just like the prophets of old, they were supposed to serve the people and based on the people's hospitality and kindness, they were supposed to spread that message. Maybe they came back a little exhausted. Maybe they came back a little discouraged. We don't know, it doesn't say. They did say what they did. But maybe they... they came back with this renewed the renewed trust in God. They needed, they needed a prayer to reconnect that trust, that passion inside them for God. Because I believe that they had that same passion that the, the prophets had. That same passion that burned inside of them as, this, as the prophets had. Because why would they have followed this guy around the desert for three years? And why would they have all, all cost them all their lives? Because that passion burned inside themselves. There was an authenticity to those prophets and the disciples that we sometimes struggle seeing it in our world today. We, we have many people in our, in our lives and we notice that they, 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 they preach to us about different things, but it's about more than we understand sometimes. It is about a God that, that burns a passion inside of us. And then Jesus goes on to tell them this about, and all of these things seek Ask, search. All of these things Jesus asks is all about trusting in God. It's about the self-emptying. It's about a self-emptying, emptying yourself out, being that vulnerable, that vulnerable in your prayer that you know and feel it. It's like, I think that there's a vulnerability like a newborn baby. That vulnerability in prayer. And we all have different ways of praying. We all have a different way of praying to God. You know, sometimes the best prayers are shaking your fist at God and telling him exactly how you feel about your life and the state of the world. Sometimes just sitting there in the presence of God in silence is more than you need to do. Sometimes praying just to know that God's there. To trust in God. That God knows more than we can ask or imagine. 
This is, you know, prayer is one of the, it's a powerful thing. It's, it's a, one of the most, most powerful experiences we can have if we let it. You know, C.S. Lewis said that, C.S. Lewis said, if you pray to a God that loves all the things you do or and hates all the things that you do, you're praying to a God of your image, not to God. And that's the wonderful thing about God, that not knowing, that not knowing of who God is in the world. And you know, I, the other day, that, that new camera that, they've, that they sent into the universe that looks and uh, these fabulous photos, these fabulous photos of the universe that, I've never see, that we've never seen before, just making me weak at the knees. Because it reminds me that, man, I really don't know as much as I think I know. And that God is more wonderful than I could even imagine. And that's what prayer does for us. We commit ourselves to that moment to be vulnerable with God in that moment. Commit ourselves to being vulnerable to let God in. To let it feel like weak at the knees. And make us feel like that holding a new baby. We're that newborn baby that God's holding. We're that vulnerable. Amen. Let us please stand as you're able. Let us say together, let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please take a position to it for prayer to which you are accustomed. Dear friends in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbours as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the Church and the world. There will be intentional silences after the biddings, and I invite you to pray out loud or in silence to whatever speaks to your heart during those silences. To my bidding, we pray to you, O Lord. Please respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you taught us how to pray. We adore you. 
We are sorry for what we have done and left undone. And we come to you with our thanksgivings and our supplications. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your many gifts to us, for the love which brings us together, for the earth which provides for our needs, for the new life you have given us in Jesus Christ. And now we give thanks for all we have to be thankful for. I give thanks for the safe delivery of our great-grandson Liam to Samantha and Blake. For our new home. For friends who love and support us. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we gather this morning in this holy and sacred space, we pray to you for our Christian family and for the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and grace to grow in your love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all members of God's holy church. Joining other Anglicans around the world, we pray today for the church in Wales and Archbishop Andy John, their primate. We pray for the Anglican church in Canada and especially for our primate Linda, for Lynn, our metropolitan, and the ecclesiastical province of BC and Yukon. We pray for Jane, our assisting bishop, and the territory of the people, remembering especially today the people of St. Michael and All Angels, Prince George, in their search for new ministry team leadership, for Reverend Patrick and his spouse, Barry. We pray for Len, our interim priest here at St. Paul's. We pray for Kyle Norman, our new Dean, and his family as they prepare for their life of ministry here among us beginning in October. We pray for our cathedral clergy, Bishop Gordon, Barbara, Bob, Dan, Sandra. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be filled with your love may hunger for truth, and may thirst for righteousness. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our sister diocese of Montreal, and especially for Bishop Mary. We pray for the Church of All Saints Dunham in this time of transition, as the Reverend Simpo Hahn retires. For St. George Clarenceville, St. Thomas Noyan, and for their clergy, the Venerable Tim Smart and the Reverend Tyson Roseberg. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we continue to pray for all members of God's Holy Church, we pray today for our own members in the St. Paul's Cathedral prayer cycle. For Roger and Nora Bennett, Norris and Heather Berg, Ted and Jerry Blackwell, Melody and Larry Sitnik, Hansony Tanukan and Chanel Maxwell Diaz, Claire and Jeremy Tossoff and their families. We pray for all those who participate in the ministry of making our communion bread, the work of their hands, giving food for our souls. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On the occasion of the papal visit, we pray for all who have traveled this week to Masquishis, 
Alberta, home of the former Ermineskin Residential School, to bear witness to Pope Francis' message in Alberta and in the coming week in other places in Canada as he meets with residential school survivors. We pray for those from the territory of the people who are attending the gathering in Alberta, especially Bishop Barbara, residential school survivors, and others from our territory, indigenous and non-indigenous communities. We pray that Pope Francis' visit to Canada will strengthen healing and reconciliation amongst all peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world and for all its cares and needs, for peace in countries and communities where there is conflict. For food where there is hunger, for sharing of resources where there is an abundance, for clean water and air where there is pollution, for areas dealing with floods, fires and other natural disasters. Praying especially today for Lytton, for the Nahoman Creek fire, for California. For an end to human trafficking, exploitation, racism, bullying, harassment, inequality and injustice. We pray for all those in power and authority that they may lead with compassion, humility and rightness of heart. We pray for our Premier, our Prime Minister, our Mayor. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our own needs and the needs of others, for those we have carried here in our hearts, for those whose names have been placed in the prayer bowl on the altar, we lift them to you, Lord, right now, that you will surround them with your care and love. I offer prayers for Mike, Robbie Lee, and Stevie Rose. For Jim. For Dwight. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, giving thanks for their life, however short or long. We pray, Lord, you will surround them with your care and love, remembering especially today Sheila Ponsford.
We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We praise you, O God, for you sent us Jesus, our teacher and Messiah, to model for us the way of love for the whole world. We offer these prayers in love on behalf of your church, your creation, ourselves and our neighbours. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another, remembering our social distancing Our offertory hymn is More Voices, 126, Are You a Shepherd?
Let us pray. God of grace, accept all we offer you this day as we look toward the glory you have promised. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're using Eucharistic prayer number five found on page 204 of the Year Book of Alternative Sermons. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for the gift of a world full of wonder and for our life which comes from you. By your power you sustain the universe. Glory to you forever and ever. You created us to love you with all our heart and to love each other as ourselves. But we we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus, your son, you bring healing to our world and gather us into one great family. Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we sing. give you thanks and praise, loving God, because in sending Jesus, your Son, to us, you showed us how much you love us. He cares for the poor and the hungry. He suffers with the sick and the rejected. Betrayed and forsaken, he did not strike back, but overcame hatred with love. On the cross, he defeated the power of sin and death. And by raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all your people. Glory Glory to you forever and ever. On the night before he gave up his life for us, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of eternal, the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Glory to you forever. Gracious God, with this bread and wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we offer ourselves to you and him. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of bread, and share in the life of the family of your children. Glory to you forever. Holy One, you call us to be your servants. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus, that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, almighty God, through Jesus our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Glory Glory to you you forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, let us pray.
friends, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome your presence in us and together proclaim our love for you with our hearts, minds, our souls, and our strength. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim your reign. Come to us, though many, and make us one in you.
Let us pray. God of grace, we have received the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son. May your love poured into us bring us to our, your promises. We ask this in the name of our, Lord, of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And glory to God, whose, whose power, power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. I don't think I have, we have any announcements unless I'm missing some. Uh, Melissa usually looks after the announcements and I put so much, uh, I put so much uh, in her that I, I never pay attention. <laughs> so, and so we have no, uh, I don't know if we have any announcements. And so uh, next week in August is a long weekend. So I'll be, we'll, uh, we'll be doing a new bulletin for August. So. Um, Will uh, are there any uh, any kind of annou any announcements I've missed? Now I do know that on the you can check on the on the 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 web the web page or uh, Facebook page or that the uh, the announcements or emails about the 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 trip out to the donkey farm. So we're doing um, oh upcoming events. Uh, we're, on August 4th at 11 a.m., we're going to, we're going to uh, Turtle, Turtle Valley Duncan Refuge for a prayer service. And uh, so we got to get some of the, we're going to bless the donkeys, so that'll be fun. And so our, the Pride Parade is August 28th, and St. Paul's has entered a human power feet and smile float for the Pride Parade. We want to, if you want to walk with us, you need to let the, the office know. But that's at 11 a.m., so we'll have to do a quick church service. <laughs> Anyways, and September 13th, there's the Common Cup is doing a concert fundraiser for the Out of the Cold. And, uh, and so that'll be, that'll be nice. Anyways, those are all the announcements I have. And so our closing hymn is... Lift high the cross, number 602 in common praise.
Let us go now in peace to love and serve the Lord.